In 2008, the controversy over Mexican-American studies was brewing, but it didn't come to a, to a boil yet. That was 2011. It was the vote in 2012 in January to put a halt to the program. The program is not a done deal right now because it's still in court and I just read today that it's going to be early November before we hear about the DSEG order that could affect the Mexican American Studies program but the fact is that it ain't over till it's over and this issue could and very likely will come back next year. So what I'd like people to do is I'd like you to in a sense go back to 2008 be on the board then when things were still in flux and ask yourself and answer would you have done things differently in terms of the Mexican American Studies program than have been done? And for the two people who are the incumbents, the question is, do you want to rethink any of the things you did and say, I would have done things differently or justify the way you did them, as the case may be? Clear enough? Don? I'm not opposed to the Mexican American Studies. I came to this country when I was about 12, and I know it's important to learn about the ethics. I love and history. But if it's a fit, but you can't allow one program to hold to USD as a hostage. If it affects $10 million, I would have probably voted no also. Because we have to take care of all the students in TUSD. And that should be the board's number one priority is the education of our children. And we have successful programs right now. We have the uh, Asian American Studies, we have the Mexican American, I mean the, uh, of course the Mexican American Studies, we have, we have also the Native American Studies, and we have the African American Studies. And I think that we could probably look into a Latin American Studies where we can have the, uh, uh, the Mexican Americans and the Latino groups can be successful in this particular organization if the court decides to say no. I think it's important to remember that the Mexican American Studies program had its origins at the University College of Education and was based in, on some uh, important theories, uh, primarily from Dr. Luis Moll uh, at the college. Unquestionably, the program was very successful. I think the board uh, instead allowed itself to become an antagonist and their own witnesses against the program. Uh, I'm still astounded that a board member uh, would go up and testify in the administrative hearing against the program and then come back and not see a conflict of interest in voting on it. Uh, it's astounding. I think the board got some very bad legal advice and it makes me question whether the board is the client or the bureaucracy is the client. I think that's a huge problem. Um, can, I, can I ask a question when you're talking about a board member who went up? Are you talking about Mr. Stegman, about Mark? I, I am indeed. Okay, then Mark, you, you have a little bit extra time here because you do have to respond to that as well as to the question. So let me uh, address that part first. I was subpoenaed. I had no choice but to go up there. Um, and I was under oath, and I, I told the truth as I saw it at the time, and that's really the only choice I had. Um, I don't see what a conflict of interest is. I, um, I'm a policymaker on the board. I think it's my responsibility to exercise that. So that would have to be explained to me. Um, I think going back to May 2010, when uh, 2021 passed, we had two sides who were very far apart and not very inclined to compromise. And what needed to happen was some level of compromise. I initially proposed, before the law came into effect at the end of 2010, that the district should commission some impartial panel to view whether there were any legal problems in the program and thereby either get outside ratification of its soundness or sometimes make changes before the law came into effect. But I was criticized for questioning the program. Then when in 2011, when I proposed the electives change, which was actually going to change only some of the courses, not all of them, uh, I felt that that was a route that could lead to compromise and would substantially salvage the program. 
I still think that might have happened, but that didn't happen. After that, compromise disappeared. The thing I most regret is the May 3rd meeting, which we had way too many police, and there were arrests that shouldn't have happened, and I will always regret that. Let me be clear uh, that I, I fully support Mexican-American studies. My undergrad at the University of Arizona is in Mexican-American studies. And I think this program that is nationally renowned could have been showcased as a program that could have brought even potential resources to the district. What I would have done is very simple. I would have listened to the students. A large contingent of students from TUSD stood up and said, when our education is under attack, what do we do? Fight back. I would have, I would have stood with board members and I would have voted to go to court. And then, and only then, if we would have lost in court, then what we have talked about, what our other options were. This program, again, was nationally renowned. We should have supported this program in 2008, we should have supported it in 2010, and we should have supported it on May 3rd. I think I fully endorse this program as something that we can model ourselves after nationally. And I think if we can effectively get students to engage to the level where they take it to the street, I think we're doing a good job. I think all of our students, if they were that passionate and engaged, this district would not be in the position that it's in now. Thanks. So the question was, what would I have done? I would have thrown the program. That was the idea. That was what the DSEG um, order was. And I would have thrown the program so that in the future, that argument about the program serving so few children, so few kids, would not exist. The program was an excellent program. I agree with what Cammie said. Um, and, I, and I would like to take exception to the idea that anybody who talks about ethnic American studies, about Mexican American studies, is immediately typed that that is our only issue. We're talking about 61% of the students. That is a majority of the students, and the number may grow. I think the issue is well worth talking about, and I'm glad that we are. I thank you for the question. Um, I, I support the program. I was very vocal at the board meetings about it. Well, I would have grown the program, because that's what you do with programs that work. Desegregation and treating kids equally, giving them an equal opportunity to education, is one of the most important things to me. That program did it, it engaged kids, and it's a tragedy that it's gone. The Mexican American Studies um, course has started off as an elective, and actually at the deputy superintendent level, it was turned into core, cur core curriculum courses in 2003 or 2004, when I was a high school student at Troya High School. That was actually an opportunity to grow the numbers. These courses were never approved by the previous boards prior to my being a board member. In addition, as a Latino, I believe our history is great. I've been to Mexico many times. I'm a first generation US citizen. I've been to Mexicali, where my father's from, Edmosillo, where my mother is from. And I've seen, and seen where they've grown and seen the history and heard about the history. But I was better off as a student when I was an exchange student to Germany. We need to make sure that our students are exposed to many different levels of ethnicities and cultures and they will be better off. I will say that I try to grow the program in terms of making them core uh, college classes and I actually received resist resistance from that because, and I strongly believe this, because none of the teachers actually in fact had what it took to have college courses or be uh, professors. Wow. Okay, um, I am, I am, I have been, I always will be a supporter of, of ethnic studies, uh, of this Mexican American Studies um, course, uh, program, and we didn't have a problem until Tom Horn ran for office and needed a platform. Um, and he found that platform in our district because this board chose not to protect, and they chose to, I believe, participate and help politics be played on the backs of our students. Uh, we know it's a successful program, it follows sound theory, it follows sound methods, and we have the, the data, many sources of data that show it works. So it is a tragedy that our board legally did not stand up for our students. 
and like some other people have said here, the DSEG order, it's a part of a federal order. And I think the next board has to decide for once and for all, is that the DSEG order just what we want to do when we want to do it? Or do we absolutely believe in bringing race relations to, protect, to better race relations in our district? And that program was meant to do that. And, and we need to support that DSEG order and MAS is definitely a part of that.